The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 754. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a life coach with a background in commercial finance, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kim Bao. Kim, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more by yourself to the listeners. Yes, I am in the space of life coaching and I also do, so I'm actually in the process of doing a virtual summit and really just helping people find their journey in healing and making sure that they're comfortable in the space that they're building and, you know, at the end of the day, I still do finance. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Kim, what's your cultural background? I'm Vietnamese. Vietnamese American. Thanks for sharing that. And what'd be your favorite self-confidence quote? I would say that for self-confidence, a lot of it, I would say my favorite one would be be yourself and be comfortable with it. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Self-confidence is the ability to believe in yourself. I believe that self-confidence is the ability to accept all of the great things and all of the scary things all of the awkward and uncomfortable things about you and knowing where you are and knowing where you want to go. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Kim, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I would say that I was, um, it's kind of funny, I wrote a post about this recently and it was about being really competitive. I think being, you know, Vietnamese American, there's the natural tendency to always want to achieve more, accomplish more, and you have a natural tendency to be competitive. And for me, it was a huge journey in understanding that that didn't make me who I am. And it's great to accomplish and do a lot of really amazing things. But really, the self-confidence for me was my aha moment when I decided to do a lot of work in healing. Thanks for sharing that. And I think You know, as Asian women being um, brought up in an Asian household, we always feel like we have to keep on achieving more, feeling that we're not enough, not realizing like who we are is just enough and whatever we achieve, like, you know, it's not like it doesn't matter, but if if we can let that go and just be our true selves, like it'll make things a lot better. And you mentioned how healing was like your aha moment. Are you able to elaborate on that? Yeah, most definitely. So I grew up in a really large Asian household. And I think like many, we all lived in one house at one point when I was a kid. And then I think there's probably like six or seven families underneath one house. And then as I grew up, we all, you know, ventured our own way. And it was interesting because I became a single parent. And the single parent life was really harsh because You know, being Vietnamese American, my family is very Catholic. And so I did a lot of things from becoming a single parent and really challenging the norms and all of that. And I had a lot of family members that didn't want to be a part of my life anymore. And so for me, I ended up going into the single parent journey by myself. And I was in a place that was super, super dark. And I realized that I needed to do some work. So I actually started doing therapy and I went for a week, every week for about a year and realized that there was a lot of, there was this saying that I used to have, it's it's never enough. And I always thought that that was a good thing. And my therapist was like, you know, that's a really bad thing. I was like, I don't understand what you mean by that. It's, It's actually, you know, it's what keeps me hungry. It's what has my drive. And she was like, you're more than enough and you don't have to keep doing more. And it didn't really sink in for me. And so like, I actually started to understand how that promoted a lot of competition. And I don't know about you, but if you're competing and you're already competing at a high level with yourself and you're always having to one up your last, you know, hurrah or whatever, it makes it really tiring and wearing on, you know, just your, your mind, your heart, um, your soul, because you're not actually taking the time to do the work to see how you're just great exactly where you're at and where you are. And so for me, that was 
that was kind of, I don't even know if I answered that question, but that was for me the biggest challenge that I had is, you know, realizing that I didn't need to do more and that I needed to be comfortable with what I had. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think this is great that you shared this because I think a lot of people, especially as women, especially as Asian women, we feel like we always have to keep going, right? We always have to take it on to the next level and to the next. It's like we're never satisfied with our current state. And we feel like if we don't achieve that next step, we're not good enough or we're not worthy of being who we are. And sometimes just realizing like, you know, where we are at this stage is great. And we can enjoy that present moment. We can realize like, you know, whatever we do in life is okay because, you know, we are more than enough and the universe has our back and we're just good. And, you know, I'm glad you're able to share that. And, you know, because of those realizations, what's your life been like now? For me, I think realizing where that competitiveness comes in, and I can actually see it in other people. And I think that the ability to have empathy for the people that are going through that journey, and then also understand where people are at in the healing process. I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've realized is that everybody's on their own journey, and nobody's at the same spot. But being able to hold space for people, where, whether they're just getting started or just understanding how much their thought process or how much their heart is being impacted by the things that they do. And so some decisions that are not the healthiest decisions, instead of being in a place where I used to judge them and take personal offense to it, I no longer take personal offense to some of the things because I understand that that's where they're at in terms of healing. And it just takes a little bit of time for you to be able to remove the ego and really sit in and understand, you know, how your decisions affect other people. Thanks for sharing. Then I'm glad how you mentioned like, you know, sometimes this healing process, we think like healing means like you're all good. You're like, you know, doing the work. But sometimes healing is just, you know, like you mentioned, maybe going through some bad things, going through that darkness, being triggered by stuff. And it's all part of that process, right? Because it's all about the good, the bad, the ugly. And we, we can realize like, you know, it's just like, not a linear process, but more like a roller coaster. We can realize like we're on our own path, like you mentioned. And, you know, we always learn something from every situation that we're in. So I'm glad you're able to share that. And if our list, you know, if a listener was, you know, tuning into your episode and she was in her own journey to self-confidence, what would be that one tip you'd give to her? That it's not as happy and cheery all the time as people make it seem and that it's okay that it gets dark and it gets lonely and it gets a little bit scary. Sometimes you have to go to the scariest places to free yourself from all the things that you've been holding on to. Thanks for sharing that great tip. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do and check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, so you can find me on Instagram at Miss Kim Bao, it's M-S-K-I-M-B-A-O. And then if you want to, you can find me on my website, which is kimbao.co.com. So it's K-I-M-B-A-O dot C-O. And yeah, so I'm in those two places. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Kim, you can also head on over to the com and search for Kim's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Kim today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to get your daily boost of confidence.